Hello, good evening and welcome to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral for the fourth and final time this week as we look forward to the big day of York's uh, Ebor meeting. A, a big pot on the table for uh, the big race itself at tomorrow afternoon. And we've also got the, the baby Ebor as well to look forward to in the shape of the, uh, the Melrose uh, and uh, a couple of old favourites uh, having the old uh, battle about who loves Kinross more course in the city of York stakes at tomorrow and hopefully uh, we won't get too much rain uh, because we know what we're dealing with on the Knavesmire it's rattling fast ground for sure as we saw this afternoon not that it stopped uh, living the dream who's been racing uh, mainly on soft ground uh, uh, did run well at uh, Haydock on fast conditions early on in the season of course but after half a furlong at uh, the, uh, uh, the Adam West stable were probably rubbing their eyes thinking they were watching a, a replay of a previous win. An absolutely blinding result, a cracking interview afterwards uh, and you've got to love the smaller trainers putting it up to the big boys uh, in the, uh, the group ones. Uh, that said, uh, a couple of the big boys won a few elsewhere of course. Uh, the convivial went to, uh, to Bally Doyle and uh, Lake Forest bounced back uh, to, uh, to win the, uh, the gym crack but we're talking about all that and more as the evening goes on and then really getting stuck into tomorrow's card. Uh, it's live and interactive as ever. Uh, like the stream, you've been knocking it out of the park with that uh, this uh, this week, and get involved on the chat box as well. Hello to everyone, uh, to Chris Graham, to Jim Stanton, to Mike Smith, to Mike Boy, who's had a good day as well. Uh, Steve is ninety nine, uh, and many, many more. My name's Ross Briley, as ever, right here to my left, Paul Keeley. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right, mate. I'm <laughs> you've said you're quite tired, so I'm trying to get. Hey, a bit yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm quite tired. A busy day today. A very busy day, but no, it's. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic racing today, wasn't it? I love seeing Live the Dream win. I mean, obviously, the race cost me a fair few quid because I couldn't have him on my mind. But I'm I'm, I'm fairly local to Epsom, and uh, to see um, that training centre have a, a big winner is just really good for the for uh, for the area. I mean, they 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 haven't sort of uh, been punching very high for very long, have they? Like, you know what I mean? It's uh, uh, had a St. Ledger winner a few years ago, but you know, not that many big so winners. So, who have you got around there? Mongan, used to be Akehurst, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, I grew up and, uh, and, it, and it was Reggie Akehurst was, you know, landing big handicaps left, right, yeah. and centre. But it just goes to show smaller trainers, you can send them a good horse, they can still do a job. And what a job they did with that one because he was lightning, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, again, he'd you, won at halfway, hadn't he? Basically, yeah, You're just never going to get to him. Well, I mean, he, he, Big Epps was going a similar pace, but looked look broken by halfway. Mm. Highfield Princess couldn't keep up. Bradsell mm. couldn't keep up. This yeah. horse just kept going and going and going and going. I mean, he's by Prince Elias, so he was always, he's always, he's always yeah, been going to be fast, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah it, was a, it was a, it was a brilliant result for racing, I think. Yeah, it was, uh, and yeah, beautiful uh, interview afterwards as well, because uh, uh, Tom Siegel. Sometimes, you know, you interview a, a trainer after a big Group One, and they say, "Yeah, well, we've always thought this horse was a Group One horse, so this has been the aim for a couple of years now, and that, uh, uh, and so on and so forth." But Adam West genuinely looked like all his Christmases had come at once, and uh, again, it's what you want to see. And the Batman. Yeah, he was brilliant, wasn't he? Absolutely superb watching that. I, I like Keels, great for Epsom, great for the race. Don't know if I agree with you about uh, the uh, that they couldn't keep up. I think I thought I thought uh, Brad Sell ran a massive race myself. I thought I thought didn't think he liked the track at all. If you watch it back, he kept switching leads, changing legs. I, th I don't think he was completely at home on the track at all. But I think he's a really good horse going forward. I think he'll be one to one to watch in the Abbey and races like that. But yes, it was a great result for the sport. Because, you know, we get a bit bored. We get a bit blasé when, you know, Warm Heart, the second, suppose second string wins the Yorkshire Oaks or John Gosson has the one, two in the Judd Monty. So it, it is good. It is good. It, it, you know, it gives everyone hope. And there's nothing like a bit of hope, isn't it? Everyone needs hope. Even Reading fans. <laughs> even re even racing fans, yeah, yeah, even racing tipsters and pundits as well. Uh, but well, as they say, it's the hope that kills you, isn't it, normally? But uh, but yeah, proper fast ground form as well. My harbour the champ, York fast ground form. Coltrane's now four from five on fast, fast ground. Uh, Lake Forest won the, his novice on fast ground. Reach has won three on fast ground now. Uh, Silver Sword won on fast ground two starts ago. It is it is lightning. Yeah, it's very it's, it's lightning, and that's as we tried. I think Keels and I said earlier in the week. Keels pointed out that you need travellers, and I need. I pointed out that you need to not get ever hampered, and that is the key. On lightning fast ground like that, you need something to travel, don't you? And every winner was exactly the same. They 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 were going within themselves because of the fast ground, and everyone never got stopped in their run. 
you know, you know, look at uh, the the reach race, for example. Probably the second should have won, shouldn't it? It was beaten the neck, and it probably got stopped stopped in its run when she would if they'd have swapped the rides the other one would have won wouldn't it and that's the key to york racing on fast ground you need a sensible jockey ryan moore was brilliant on that that first winner wasn't he mm. and you need a long clear straight run at things and if you get that you've got a great chance uh, and and also it's really hard to make up ground unless they go way too fast yeah. but that's cool that's what that's what fast ground should be like so yeah. there's no complaints for anyone i think that's absolutely superb i think the surface there has been great all week yeah uh, Akil, just a quick word. Do you think Tom thought the second should have won because because he he tipped it, or is that do you think he, he's not that kind of? Uh, I don't think he's that kind of guy, to be honest. I yeah. think uh, no, no, very very well balanced, far more balanced than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, Tom, just uh, yeah, you, you, you sure? Are you sure? Are we? Are we? But very annoying. Cons- uh, like two weeks ago, I bigger bets of the season on him to win a lesser race or might not have been a lesser race uh, uh, at uh, in the in the racing league uh, in the racing league and i was gonna say it might not be a lesser because i think i think the the winner of that race has got a, a good chance in well, yeah. company tomorrow isn't he yeah it has uh, but she uh was was a bit you know she just never got a run and that's what we're saying you know if she'd got a run that day on fast ground at windsor she would have surely been bang there but it's just that's the margins on fast ground You've got, you've got to, you've got to put up with. You can't, can't be hampered because as soon as you get hampered, you are left too much to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, but again, and it's nice, it's nice, Simon Clare, to get a uh, a summer racing festival on fast ground, isn't it? Because I mean, we, we don't get many of them these days. Oh, listen, yeah. I mean, Goodwood was obviously marred by by bad weather, and and I think there's, I think flat racing on fast ground is is the most aesthetically pleasing. When you see horses quicken, when you hear see them run to the line hard, uh, you see you know close finishes. Uh, you know, you know, we're getting we get all sorts of weather in Britain. You never know what you're going to get, but I, I think um, yeah, soft ground really should be for the jumps, and fast ground for the flat would be would be my preference. Um, it was great, great call. I mean, thought Coltrane was great today. The Mariscotti's are. A good friend of mine. Ouch! Was, the, was my finance. That's, that's the top left-hand corner of the bingo. That, <laughs> that was is. it. That was, the, that was the last one remaining. That was the last one remaining. <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a, listen, he was my finance director back in 2006 when he they sold Coral and he made a load of money. And um, he'd never had any interest in horse racing up to that point with his wife, Janice. And because they'd obviously come into a lot of money, they decided to go into race horse ownership. They asked me and Steve-O, who we recommended. We gave them a few names. They chose Andrew Balding. And uh, and Andrew Balding's never given me any kind of commission for sending him an owner who's been there 16 years. Which, uh, <laughs> uh, he sometimes mentions. But um, but, it, but listen, it was great to see them win that. And um, and Live the Dream was fantastic. It wasn't just the trainer, was it? The groom, the, the, mm. the young girl leading him in, couldn't contain herself, tried to answer Chris from Wally Bell and just broke down into tears. The... Uh, the, the, the husband and wife who owned him with their children were there. They could hardly get a sentence out. They were so gel shocked. It was I thought it was extraordinary. And uh, and, and great news that they're going to be heading out to Santa Anita for the Breeders' Cup. So um, sure. another <laughs> another great another great gang to uh, join that. Stuff. Yeah, Thank lovely you, stuff. Yeah, there you go. And then um, I don't know if he if he can win the Lanzarote in the Eclipse as well, Simon. Then well, yeah, exactly. Call Eclipse. Call me a bonus for that. <laughs> yeah. I, look, I want to shout out High Foot Princess. I, I love this mare. She, she ran a race again. She came yeah. second. She's run every single time she's turned up this season. She's been bang there. You know, it's hard in the sprints to win them all, isn't it? Because horses, you know, any, any any horse on their day, if they put in their best performance, uh, can can you know can obviously come out on top. And that happened today. But uh, yeah, she's well, she's I mean, continues. Apart, apart from Cardam, you know, she was she's surrounded by. Th- improving three and four year olds and you know she, she's probably looking around thinking oh for god's sake and all these you know these these young upstarts and she ran her, her absolute face off probably you know to a similar level as she did when when winning it last year but just just ran into one exactly exactly and that's all you can ask really so i'm sure uh, john fairley and john quinn and the team there are thrilled again with her and uh, they'll keep they'll be on off to the car next and yeah she you know all being well she should land a couple more races before she heads off to the breeding show yeah, absolutely, uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably about it. Give a shout out to to everyone at home. Like I said, we've seen to uh, quite a few people have had a few uh, few half decent days. So we'll see how they uh, they get stuck into uh, today, uh, day four of the uh, e-ball meeting. Of course, uh, that's coming up after this. Okay, uh, we'll 
well, you'd be uh, living the dream with living the dream. Let's uh, answer Anita later on uh, in the year. Uh, well, let's do, uh, let's go to uh, York tomorrow there, where we've probably got more uh, chance of horses going over to Australia than America, potentially, on uh, tomorrow's car. But we uh, we start off with the, uh, the Strensor Stakes, which, um, speaking of Australia, was this not one, was this one by Zaki a couple few years ago? Or mm. he's certainly the type of horse he used to well run in this yeah. before well he went off into, over to Australia and decided he was going to start winning every race in... Uh, under the sun, uh, but uh, similar connections, of course. Nostrum, Foster Michael Stout is the even money favourite. Uh, Father Strensor Stakes, El Drama is three to one. Jimmy Hendrix nine to two. Spirit Dancer tens. Flight Palm is ten to one. Chichester is thirty three to one. Uh, the outsider of the bunch there, uh, and uh, Nostrum returns to fast ground, which is uh, yeah, might well be the key for uh, for him. This is the kind of race that is a bit of a uh, a bit of a graveyard for these uh, young up and comers, though. But battering and besto on fast ground keels looks uh, looks pretty good now after that uh, that's all we raised the other day but it's just always that york factor short price three-year-old small well, field yeah exactly like you said york factor going up and trip by uh, mm. a furlong having raced keenly at goodwood um so there, there are question marks it's the best best horse in the race i think but do you want to be taking evens i don't want to be taking evens at home i don't think it's a, it's a uh, let him win yeah. at that price kind of thing. Yeah, he could be, you know, he could be paddling late on if he's as keen as he was last time, like, you know, and, and, and that worry me. I'm prepared to give Jimi Hendrix another go. I mean, I'm, I'm ruling out El Drama because he's only beaten one horse each time he's run at York. Uh, so that's, he's, that's, he's that a soft ground me. horse as well, yeah, isn't I he? think so. Yeah. Uh, whereas Jimi Hendrix, we know he can handle anything. He is um, booked on the plane to Australia. Mm. He goes after this. Uh, apparently, they've got a race for five-year-olds over there, which he will be when he gets there. Um, is, that, the, is it that one to fly? The, it, <laughs> no, <laughs> because, of, because of their breeding and the, right. what's it, like, you know, there's a race over there and, you know, if he wins it, it you know, it's, it's like for millions and, you know, I've, I was told the average RPR of the winner was something like 95. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer, which is why we have such an exodus of horses, obviously. Mm. But anyway, I, I just thought he was worth another crack at group level because I just think he didn't go well for him last time. I don't know if he didn't want to go round a right-handed bend or he just he just didn't seem happy early. So Dewey Costello, who rode him for the first time, uh, decided he needed to get after him. And then he really picked up, hit the front way, way too soon. Yep. You know, um, it was almost, a funny race almost, though, wasn't it? Almost a Frankel move in uh, St James's Palace that he did and, and only managed to hold on against Zoffany then. But, you know, he's no Frankel. Uh, you know, so hopefully long sweeping bend at York um, we'll see a we'll see a better horse, and he's a horse that doesn't like being crowded either. So a small field, you know. I know I know he's won a hunt cup, but if you remember, he was out on his own. He was on his other side, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But he was also away from those on the other side as well. If you know what I mean? He was just well. He's on his own at Newbury as well. He yeah, just did a solo, he, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so apparently he doesn't like that. Um, I'd give him an, another go at being group class. So yeah, I think he's the danger to the fav. Okay, a uh, good record on fast ground as well. The only time he's been exactly. out of frame was. In the Golden Mile, where he was drawn 21, I think, so he had no chance there. Uh, but yeah, he's 92, um, plenty of. Uh, Rich Beckett as well, I mean, I, I just had your words echo in, my, in the back of my brain uh, today, Tom, as he banged in a uh, two year old winner after a two year old winner, and he's, yeah, he's having a right old year, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he, he's one of those trainers, isn't he, that is as good as anyone, but no one thinks he's as good as anyone, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, he's, he's a, he's a fan, fantastic trainer, Rafe, uh, yeah. He's had an amazing season, isn't he? He's got he's had two year olds are incredible. Every time I look up, there's another one. Of course, ran very well in the uh, in the uh, Jim Crack, didn't it, against the bias, I thought. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I can see Jimi Hendrix going really well. Um, I think probably we should go to you, Ross, because I think over the last few days, I think we've got the impression that you are founder member of the Spirit Dancer <laughs> fan club. And so I reckon that's where you're going to go. Tell us about that one. I mean, you've got to, haven't you? It's got York form, it's got fast ground form, everything's working out. Treg and he ran a blinder out of that race the other day. Reach won out of it today. Um, you know, the uh, it was a big eye-catcher in the John Smith's Cup. Far he's in cracking Nick. Oshinor's right out of his skin. He's only got, what, five pounds to find or something. He's got a... He, he, oh, I mean, I'm just going to check this before I... Is it now? I've only got two places. I was going to say... Oh, no, it's only six winners, isn't it? I thought we might get a third place. He's going to finish third, Tom, basically, isn't he? Well, that's no good, is it? And I thought you were going to say he was going to win. Russ. No, I think he is going to win, but I'm trying. I'm trying to temper my enthusiasm because if I get carried away, then it never goes. Uh, never goes well. I like to just, you know, you're never disappointed if you don't get too enthusiastic. At all. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, I, I, I like Jimi Hendrix's Spirit Dancer in the race. 
I do think Nostrum could could be literally totally different class. I have to say though, like Kiels, he, he was, I did, was really disappointed with him at Goodwood because didn't he have the race run? He was out front on the rail on the everything went right and he still got beat. Now Epictetus might be very good, but he wasn't far ahead of a lot of other horses. Now most of them all run in the uh, celebration mile tomorrow, so we'll get a bit of bit of an idea, but. I think flight plans there to take him on. Look, he could be totally different class. I think after Newmarket, if you'd have slot, we'd have all been saying that's a great price. Uh, after Goodwood, I'm not sure it is. But he could easily run away with this. But, you know, at the prices, I think I slightly prefer Jimmy to Spirit Dancer just simply because I'm a Ray Fleckett groupie and I just think he's slightly better than Spirit Dancer. But as you say, we've seen all week York form comes to the fore at York and yeah. Spirit Dancer loves it here. And with that, with that in mind, it's probably also worth mentioning Chichester as well. Who's uh, he's a he's a bit like Epic Tetris. Every time I see him run over ten and twelve furlongs or whatever, he, he, he dabbles with every now and then. I think he's a miler, and he uh, he went on fast ground at uh, at York, and I, I know he didn't run very well at Salisbury the other day, but it was the first run for the yard. So, yeah, um, one of those tricky little small field group races here, Simon. Yes, it is. I mean, Nostrum is is the horse, I suppose, that you know a lot of punters will be looking at to start the day with a, you know a, a winning favourite. He's there. He's our in the no special, and he's now even money. He's been backed in from six to five to eleven to ten to even money. We're going eleven to eight to the end of the show, uh, up to twenty pounds on that. Um, I must admit, I, I, I had I kept, I, El Drama has that has some bits of form which make make you think God, you know, in Grade Three company, small field. Uh, you know he's worth a bet, but I say it's interesting. Paul just mentioned the York angle, and he, yeah, he hasn't run well at York, has he? Which is a, it's a concern. Three-year-olds here. There's only been one three-year-old win in the last mm. ten years, and they've made up not far short of a quarter of the runners. Again, I don't know if that's just coincidence, but there's two three-year-olds here, and the favourite's one of them. Um, so yeah, I'm sort of now round, on a personal level. I'm wondering whether Spirit Dancer with the Ross Briley Magic uh, Stardust, maybe at ten to one, he's the value to take on the favourite with. Well, just, yeah, as long as it doesn't rain, because that's the thing, isn't it? But it's proper York fast ground form. But yeah, Jimi Hendrix has got fast ground form. Spirit Dancer, Chichester, um, Nostrum, obviously. But it, it does look an open contest. So, um, mm. but, uh, yeah, with six runners. But yeah, Keels, what's the, uh, what's the angle? Uh, yeah, I'm a Jimi Hendrix man. I can certainly see the case for your one. OK, there we go. And uh, Tom? Uh, look, I, I think Nostrum, if he's back to his new market, Form will run right clean away from these, but you can't back him on the back of a good wood. I don't think so. Like you say, I'll probably back Jimi Hendrix and Spirit Dancer. Okay, there we go. And uh, yeah, relatively. Nostrum's a bit soft, says Doghouse, uh, Doghouse Riley. Um, Emily Lowry says, like Spirit Dancer already, but a few mistakes now. Ross is on. Careful, Emily. Let's not get carried away. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, stop clock and all that. Uh, Spirit Dancer, yeah, for Emily. And. Um, yeah, Nostrum hoses in, and Paul Cooper's come on as well. So Paul, Coop, Paul Cooper's in the chat. So good. Someone's registered as Paul Cooper. Well, you must have heard who he's been talked about last night, uh, and he's with Nostrum. So there you go. We might have a goalkeeper. So he pulls his rabbit out of his hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a goalkeeper type theme because Yashin's coming up later on, isn't he? So we. Can... If the they maybe get our favourite goalkeepers in on the that chat there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure everyone's named a horse after Kevin Pressman. I'll be honest with you, but let's uh, we'll see if it see if it happens. Uh, I assume afterwards, by the way, Tom, that you were mixing up Tommy Cooper and Paul Daniels. That's that that's surely what was happening, right? Listen, I'm 54 years old, Ross. I mix up everything. Yeah, fair the way. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, that's uh, Tom Keeley and Paul Siegel's selections then for the, uh, the opener at York tomorrow. Uh, moving on then to the, uh, the Melrose, uh, mile and six, the, uh, the distance here for this uh, three year old handicap. Uh, of course, uh, last year's winner, Solcombe, trained by William Haggis, is now uh, having fun and games down in, uh, in Australia. Uh, will Lordship or Alhambra Palace join them from the same connections? Four to one and six to one. Middle Earth, seven to one. Uh, he should be going down under, really, shouldn't he? Uh, Denmark, 15 to 2 with True Legend. Uh, Davideo, 17 to 2. Vaguely Royal at 9 to 1. The Goat, 11 to 1. And then bigger prices, the rest. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, William Haggis, excellent record in this race. Uh, both these horses are on uh, uh, upward curves and winning runs, Tom. But do they have any more in hand of the handicapper over the uh, unexposed novices? I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure they all do. Probably everything in the race is uh, not on their their best mark. I think uh, Lordship was quite impressive against the bias that Haydock. Haydock's a 
by York on very fast ground. Haydock's probably the best track in the front running track in the country. He did really well to pick up and win that race the other day uh, over this trip. I think he's definitely the one to beat. I think there's more to come from him. Alhambra Palace, I think, by La Havre, I think he'd want a lot of rain. Uh, I don't know how much rain they're going to get. They're forecast some, but I doubt they'll get enough to make turn it in his favour. But he is he's sneaked in and just is he is he out the weights or he's just in his on just right on the bottom on his bottom mark there. So he's obviously got a chance. Um, massive fan of Roaring Lions, so Middle Earth's in there and the other Fox horse is there as well. I think they stay really well. Roaring Lions, absolute disaster that he's gone considering how few. Uh, staying stallions we have, but I'm, I think Middle Earth and the, the, the former Middle Earth r- runs is looking better and better, isn't it? He was uh, second to a really good horse, another Roaring Lion horse, Lion's Pride, two starts ago with the goat behind. And last time he beat a horse uh, by a short head Nakib or something that won by 10 lengths last night. So the form's looking better for him. I certainly wouldn't rule out him. There's loads in there you could give a chance to David Deo. I'm, I, uh, I got sucked into backing. Richard Farhi's golden move uh, at Ascot last time. And I went about 10 years ago, I thought Olivier Pellier was the best jockey I'd ever seen. I think now I think he's the worst jockey I've ever seen. He was absolutely hopeless on golden move. He literally couldn't hold it, got, got into about 20, got hampered about 20 times and he finished on the bridle in about fourth or fifth. I think the form of his previous run gives him every chance of running really well. So, uh, so I'm uh, I'm I'm get, giving a chance at a big price to Golden Move from stall three. I just think he won't mind the ground. He's by Golden Horn. He'll stay well. And it, it was literally a throwout one last time. So he's my selection. But I think you can make a case for loads. True, le- true legend ran bumped into a good horse to near at Goodwood. Although Balance Play didn't really give that form a boost today. But he'd be my choice. Golden Move down the bottom for Richard Fahey and Cam Hardy. Okay, golden move it is then. Uh, who could be a, a big price for uh, for a yard having a good uh, a good time of it? Lord Shiban Alhambra Palace. Uh, ma- I mentioned Middle Earth. He's 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 managed to get a handicap mark without, should we say, um, trying to get a, much of a handicap mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, but there were, you know there were plenty that you know have got potential to improve uh, for the extra distance of in there. So I mean, it's, it's it's very hard to say. I mean, I was very impressed with Lordship. I think he's mm. I think it's frightening. Actually, Maureen Haggis said. Um, afterwards, it'd be interesting if we ever get him out with some juice in the ground. Uh, and given that he's done all of his winning on fast ground, yeah. um, like, you know, but you, know, you, you can't hold that against him because he has done all his winning on fast ground. So he's the one to beat. I like Tom. I do like Golden Move. Um, he's made the case for him. No need for me to make it again. But the other one I backed was Fox Journey. Uh, I just thought he absolutely hated the ground at, yeah. at uh, Goodwood last time. So it's a throwout run. I mean, for him, he's probably run quite well on it. Previous win, he you know he was really strong at the end. It just went through the race, lovely. Uh, he's going to like fast ground. He's a half brother to Forza Orta, who won over two mile fast ground earlier in the week. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's all going to be perfect for him. Uh, and yeah, I, don't, I think he's still reasonably well handicapped. So, but again, as Tom said, they're probably. You know, you're, going to have two or three, you're going to have two or three horses that do disappoint and stay disappointed because that's what you have in these races, isn't it? But yeah. you, there are going to be a few of these that do turn out to be a fair bit better than they're rated at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's not that many that many of them who are properly proven on fast ground, is there? No. Uh, which could be interesting. But yeah, I thought I thought the I initially thought the two Gosden horses were interesting, uh, Middle Earth and uh, and Vaguely Royal. He's, he's, he's not won this race, though, uh, as uh, John Gosden. You'd think this was his, would be his type of mm. uh, race, but... Um, He's, uh, he's yet to yet to do it, but Vaguely Royal also has the air of a horse who uh, uh, hasn't necessarily found his, his best foot uh, uh, yet, and he keeps stepping up in trip. He won over a mile and a half last time out, but yeah, absolutely wide open uh, this Melrose, as you would hope and expect for a race of this nature, Simon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really competitive, and uh, just fascinating to hear all the different horses being uh, Given a chance, Middle Earth been well back. He's seven from ten in the last hour or so, and Golden Move. Obviously, the, the Tom Siegel factor has seen that shortened down to around sort of fourteens mark. And um, we're paying the extra place, four places rather than three. Uh, and we got it in those special based around the William Haggis uh, horse. Obviously, he's won the race a couple of times in the last few years. Uh, it's five to two, William Haggis to win the race with either of his runners. I think they work out currently the price is four to one, six to one, around fifteen to eight if you to back them both. So you can get them five to two, both uh, both together. So if you fancy, what, well, both of them, obviously. <laughs> have a, have you good on that? <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Um, 
but look, really competitive race. Uh, I, you know, again, not an easy one to try and figure out, figure out a fancy for. I thought, I thought, you know, Denmark's very unexposed, only run on soft ground, beautifully bred. Uh, Ryan Moore riding brilliantly. Their battle cry one today was sort of unfancy, drifting the betting and won the two-year-old. Again, I'd be half, I'd have half an eye on the market just to see if there was any support for that. Because, uh, but, but you know, it's it's clutching at straws a little bit because there's very little, you know. Uh, fast ground was no fast ground porn to go on but uh, yeah competitive race uh, looking forward to see how it turns out yeah and uh, obviously the uh, the winner of this last year went to Australia with the second and third running the uh, the Evo yeah it's uh, a it's a win and you in for the Evo isn't it and uh, but it's a win and you go to Oz nowadays yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> win and you uh, and a little and a, and a check gets past yeah. you in the, exactly, the winners yeah. enclosure. Uh, but yeah, Lordship 4-1. to one. So yeah, absolutely wide open stuff then for the Melrose uh, tomorrow. Uh, Tom, how will you be playing it? Well, I'm, I'm, I've backed Golden Move just because I think there's plenty more to come from him and I think he's a strong stare at the trip. Okay, Golden Move. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, the, uh, the horse who finished a couple of places behind him, French Invasion, um, just got touched off at Newmarket this afternoon, so that form uh, looks half decent. Skills? Yeah, I've backed Golden Move and I've backed uh, Fox Journey as well. Okay, uh, there we go. I'm going to take the two Gosling horses in the hope that uh, you can't keep a, a good father and son down, as the saying goes. Uh, Simon? Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm probably going to have a few quid each way on Denmark. Denmark, and Actually, I will mention a special link to that. Ryan Moore, we offered that special yesterday, him, him to ride three or more winners today at 10 to 1. He rode a double. He's riding really well, isn't he? He's got. We're offering the same special again in the No Special tomorrow to ride three or more winners tomorrow at York, 10 to 1 from 8 to 1. He's on Nostrum, even money. He's on Denmark, 7 to 1. We'll come to the, the rest of the runners. But Muta, Muta Basa, Basa, oh, you know what I mean, 7 to 1. Real Dream, 7 to 1. Eras, 14 to 1. Uh, Alabama, 7 to 1. The Haunted Dream, 4 to 1. He's got loads of nice rides. Um, so, again, if you think Ryan Moore's going to have a stellar day, uh, I fancy a few of his tomorrow. So, uh, maybe tomorrow will be the day he gets the treble and land for 10 to 1 in the no special. Okay, fantastic stuff. Uh, Kanzuk One says vaguely Royale to uh, to win. Uh, as for the rest, uh, Disney account going for True Legend, Middle Earth for uh, for Frizzy Red, uh, and uh, plenty of other opinions as well. The bookies fellow says Ross looks like he's just fallen out of bed. Thank you very much for uh, uh, for that. Yes, uh, you're right. I, I don't. If I, the thing is, if I do the button up, it's too high and it chokes myself. If I open it, it, it does look like I'm, I'm Rip Van Winkle. But never mind, I can't win. Um, three o'clock at York, the uh, the city of York Stakes uh, coming up next. Seven furlong the distance for this group two contest and uh, Kinross everyone's favorite horse is seven or four favorite uh, to uh, to win this race yet again four to one sacred Isaac Shelby 13 to two Muta Sarbeck 15 to two Alsal Hale 8 to one Olivia Morelda is 11s Jumbi 18s Kobe is 25 to one uh, Pogo uh, should make the uh, the race a decent test and Sondrine as the visor on is the outsider of the uh, uh, the bunch uh, returning to York uh, has she been since uh, she has been so yeah she was third in this last year wasn't she she's not had much luck on her visits to this uh, track uh, but Paul Keeley there are a lot of horses here who again every seven furlong race every seven furlong group race you get horses turning up going maybe I'm a seven furlong horse maybe this is my calling in life and they all come up against Kim Moss oh, come on, Kim Moss and he wins doesn't he I mean he's great isn't he I mean I you know, it was one of those. I'd, I'd backed him anti post at a ridiculously short price last year, and he ended up going off fives because everyone thought he didn't handle fast ground. I, myself included, I didn't follow up. Uh, and um, he came out and won quite easily, didn't he? Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, he's just he's as good as anything around at seven furlongs. And, you know, again, he's, another, he's, he's one of those horses. He's six now. He seems to get better with every run throughout the season. So, a bit sluggish the first run, better the second run, then wins the Lennox. Uh, you know, I'm still not sure he was 100 percent at his best when he won the Lennox, but he's he's you know yeah. he's going on and on and on. So he's very very much the one to beat. You know, I was trying to make a case for Sacred to beat him. She went a favourite last year in this race um, and blew out. So that's a black mark against her. But uh, she was second in allowed so she does have handle mm -hmm. York. Uh, that's probably a career best last time. Yeah, I yeah. And she was probably she probably in better form coming into this year's race than she was last. So. You know, I think she's a serious threat. Yeah, I think she'll. I think she'll run a much bigger race this time because, yeah, she's almost run two career best. The the the, the first win on your weather and, and and then the second to card and, and this is this is probably more a trip than six furlongs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think she, I think she's a threat. Uh, I'm not going to play in a race. I'm going to shout I'm Kim Ross because I love him. Okay, yeah, there you go, Kim Ross. Then seven two to four. Who wins the city of York? Forty seven percent of you think 
uh, that our old friend Kim Ross is going to go uh, and do the business again. Um, but yeah, probably a tougher race than last year, I'd say, Tom. Though he's, you know, Isaac Shelby's coming back for another crack. Muta Sarbeck is uh, a horse who's got, you know, he's got a hell of a, a lot of early pace over a mile. It'll be interesting to see how he does over seven. Jumbie loves seven furlongs. Covey's back at a track that probably should suit that uh, uh, unexposed horse as well. Um, but, or do you think Kim Ross is just going to turn up and do what he does? I think I think he's clearly the most likely winner. I don't, I'm never worried about him on the ground. I mean, he was second in a Breeders' Cup on firm ground, wasn't he? He ran very well in the uh, whatever they're at the six furlong race at Ascot this year. It was very quick ground. He's, 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 I just don't think ground's an issue for him anymore. I think he's better. I think what happens on soft ground is that a lot of horses don't handle it. But I don't think you say Chris got a chance of beating. I know uh, the Haggises don't think she was at her best last year at any any stage really, and uh, she's she's definitely better this year. I like the fact that she's also had a bit of a break before she came into this race last year, and she won at Newbury, and been really impressive at Newbury. I always think that Sacred's a little bit better fresher, and so I think she's got a chance of beating him on very fast ground. I think Kin Ross will still win, because I think they're going to go really really hard. Uh, and I think that'll suit him. I think the faster they go, the better he is. So, I'm, like Keels, I'm hoping Kin Ross will win. I do think Sacred's got a chance, especially if the rain stays away. I, I'm a, as, as you all know, I'm a big Isaac Shelby fan as well, but I do wonder whether the ground will be too quick for him. So, he, I'd be a little bit against him. And I thought Olivier Moralda could run well at a big price, but I'd be surprised if she's anywhere near good enough to beat Kin Ross and Sacred. So, I think it's between the top two. Uh, I'm, like Keels, I, I won't be... I'll, I'll be watching rather than betting. Some, you know, we always say we have to have a bet, but some races uh, you just don't have to have a bet, and you can enjoy watching them. And this is one of them. I'll be really cheering Kim Ross home. Over. Kim Ross seven or four then. Um, just to pick up on the Isaac Show with it. I mean, he did win the July Stakes on fast ground, didn't he? And almost I remember him running on soft ground, and people were saying, "Oh, will he handle soft ground?" Because he was so good on fast ground. So, um, I mean, forget oh. it. He could be similar to Kim Ross in that he's just. He's just a just good, a very horse. good horse. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, you can, it's very easy when you see a wide margin win on soft ground. Think, oh, we must have loved that. Yeah. Uh, but he just handled it better than the others on the day, and it, it might not be that important to him at all. Yeah. Um, quick word for two others at slightly bigger prices. Uh, Jumbi is one of them. I can't quite understand why Jumbi's eighteen to one. I mean, this horse is a proper seven furlong fast yeah. ground horse. Yeah, I like Jumbi. Won the Hungerford last year, didn't he? Uh, and you know, with a good turn of foot as well. Yeah, and dotted up at Haydock uh, yeah. a, a few weeks ago as well. Yep. Um, and the other one, we, we really took on Covey. We could not believe the price of this horse uh, in the um, in the jersey mm. because we said the run style is completely unsuitable to the track. However, this is York. Is there a chance that 25 to 1 has gone too far the other way? Uh, there might be. I mean, he does need to step up big time, doesn't he? But yeah. probably seven fell around here will suit him as well, won't it? You know similar I mean? similar to Haydock in run style. Yeah, but Haydock was a mile, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And he went hard at Haydock and still managed to hold on. So if he can go hard over seven furlong, yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah, OK. Uh, but, but there's more pace in the race as well, isn't there? That's the other issue. So yeah. the thing it's is... That, I, mean, I, know, I know it's it's not a massive thing at York, but I do think it's tricky from there on the seven furlong race. You saw that in the two-year-old race today, didn't they? And in the mile handicap. It got quite hard to get into the race if they go quick, given mm. the way the ground is from out there. I just thought it might be a bit tricky. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah, you might do a lot of running to get into a, a decent uh, posse. But uh, yeah, Kim Ross seven to four then to uh, to win the City of York Stakes. Um, I guess similar to Highfield Princess again, though Simon. We all want him to win. He he should win. He's the best horse in the race. But there are younger legs up against him. But um, yeah, he's uh, he's an old favourite, and he he's genuinely one of those horses that probably I'm gonna have to double check this, but wins more than he loses, which is uh, is rare at this level. Yeah, listen, he's he's extremely likable, and I mean the ground thing's an interesting one. I mean, you know, he's he's won one one race from eleven on good or faster, and he's won seven of twelve on good to soft or slower. So, of course, you can then look at bits of form where he's run very well on faster ground. But like Tom said, maybe he ex he really really excels on a softer ground where maybe others don't run so well, and maybe he's more vulnerable on a quicker surface. I mean, the, the one the one win he had on a on, on good, uh, far, you know, good firm ground was, of course, this race last year. So that's in his favour. I think you've got to take him on as a bookie. We we made him uh, our in the know price boost earlier when he was thirteen to eight. We were going to go fifteen to eight. He's actually drifted out to seven to four, two to one ish. So we're now going to go nine to four. We just just had a quick chat. The traders updated the price. So if you fancy Kin Ross? It's nine to four until the end of the program for up to twenty pounds to take advantage of one of those boosts. And I think bookies will be looking to take him on. You know, because of that maybe because of that ground element. 
Uh, Sacred, I thought, obviously, the form this year, she looks much better. She finished ahead of Kin Ross uh, at Royal Ascot, ahead of a Highfield Princess. You know, that was a great run, and she's got great form over seven points. And the one I thought was interesting was Mutasa, Mutasa Beck, uh, with Ryan Moore in the plate, running over a mile pretty well. Disappointed Royal Ascot last time, around, one in the lock in where it was went just four to one for the lock in having been one at Newmarket. Uh, but he's won four of his five, seven furlong starts. You know, he'll go from the front, Ryan Moore on the side. I thought each way uh, he might represent a bit of value, particularly if you're looking to take on the favourite. But uh, yeah, again, lovely shape to the race from a bookmaker and a punter point of view. Just got to decide whether you're, you're with Kinross or against. Yeah, 94 is quite enticing though, especially as there's, uh, there might well be, the rain that is forecast is around sort of one or two o'clock, so it might actually... Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be a bit rainy this evening, isn't there? But it's not supposed to be vast amounts. We're talking, about, you know, roughly what they stuck on um, in the early hours of this morning for today. So, so I can't see it being much different unless the, the forecasts are bang wrong, which is probably about a four or six shot generally, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, but you have, you do have the special app, of course. But uh, um, yeah, yeah. only thing about it, all the apps you look at and all the different different things. One of them will get it right, and some of them will be bang wrong because they're all different. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's what we do on the show, right? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We all have our own opinions. This is the thing, I think, I do, do you think meteorologists are the same? Do you think, oh, they know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. Someone's going, hey, what, what do you mean? You use, that, you use that measurement? Oh, no, mate, no, you don't want to listen to that measurement. It's a load of nonsense. You want to use my measurements. Yeah, well, all can guesses. You believe, can you believe Simon got through Muta Sarbeck without mentioning Jim Crowley? Yeah, well, there you go. Oh, oh. Awesome. That was really good, Sam. Very proud of you. Oh no, I failed. That's it. That's it. You've. Uh, we thought. We thought you were a one, 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 one. But no, there's a duck egg there, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, as for, uh, for everyone at home, Isaac Shelby placed late. No chance, says Doghouse Riley. Um, as for the uh, the rest, uh, Dean Partridge says Isaac Shelby all day long. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, it, it it really is a game of opinions, isn't it? Uh, as they uh, they say. Uh, and uh, Kim Ross is 7-4 to four to win the City of York Stakes again tomorrow uh, at 3 o'clock. Uh, big race of the, uh, the week, of uh, the day, of the season potentially for, uh, for some of you uh, is the Ebor Handicap, just shy of one mile and six furlongs uh, to, uh, uh, to go to win this. 300 grand on the table to the winner. Sweet William has been aimed at this pretty much all season and is 7-2 to two favourite. Real Dream surely has been aimed at this as well after that uh, uh, eye-catching run at the track earlier on in the year. Uh, Jack Finbar and Absurd are coming over from Ireland as well. Uh, Live Your Dream for the boys in blue, but notably Sire Bin Saroor, not Charlie Appleby. Uh, Scampy, he's definitely been aimed at this all year as well. He's 10-1. to one. Adjuvant ran in the Melrose last year. Uh, Yashin, again, uh, can anyone um, lay a glove on him? Uh, he's a, a 12 to 1 shot and it's 16 to 1 and bigger the rest. Uh, but uh, Paul Keeley, a big field handicap. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to say to you, uh, do you, I looked at this and I thought it's very top heavy. There were sort of seven or eight I thought were really classy, but there's, is this a slightly easier race to win this year? Or is that yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, in, in, you know, in respect to previous Ebors about over the last few years, it's, it's a terrible race. Uh, I mean, I was, yeah. I was trying fact, to. Yeah. Like, you know, anyway, <laughs> it's a fact. I mean, let's have a look. Uh, go back to 2019. 15 of the 22 runners this year would not have got into the race. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, every, you know. So it is objectively a yeah. worse race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you nearly always have to be rated around, you know, at least 100 to get in. That year was 105. Um, this, you know, I mean, What's the name? Sweet William wouldn't have got in the race for the last five years, and he's a seven to two favourite, and he's got seven horses below him in a handicap. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? So it is a lower class, and part of the reason for that is, as uh, you know, older horses retiring, other horses, you know, Sulcombs and your likes of one of the Melrose last year go to was, and I think when that happens, and this is the most important thing, it becomes far easier for a top trainer to sneak a four-year-old into the race, yeah, way under its true ability, uh, and. Because you've got to show a certain amount, they can do that while they're winning. And Sweet William has done that. Uh, he's won very, very easily. He gets in under a £4 penalty. He's £4 well, and there's no surprise whatsoever he's sent the two because he's hacked up every time he's run yeah. uh, for his last three wins. Uh, I also think Real Dream is... I mean, he's the one I've backed. He's the one yeah. I've backed Real Dream as one to, to, against him because he had, a, he had a look at York in that winning you in race. Yeah. Uh, and... It just wasn't fast enough for a mile and a half, I don't think. Like, no. you know, I didn't think they went that fast anyway. 
I, I got the feeling it was a let if he, let's take him to York. If he yeah. hates it, we won't bother. Yeah. Him. But he actually yeah. ran really well. Yeah. And then Ascot exactly. last time out. Ascot like last a time. Kick, didn't uh, it? Yeah, it was very much a penalty kick. But but let's win far enough so just yeah. in case you need to be rated a hundred or something to get in. Yeah. So you know he got a bit of a rise for that. But yeah, he's been prime for it all year. He's he's the one I fancy. I would say fancy the most because I'm, you know it just won't surprise me if Sweet William. Um, hacks up because you know John Gosden's already talking about cup races for him next year, mm. so you know he could be that far ahead of the handicap. But I think Wheel Dream's got a massive upside too, and although I like to look at you know bigger prices in these fields, I just I struggle to see how Live Your Dream, who's only ten to one, is going to give ten pounds to these horses. I just mm. don't see. I just don't see it. So I sort of half lost interest. I think Berkshire uh, Rocco. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's been second in the St. Ledger. He's not badly treated nowadays. And there was a, a lot of promise last time. I think he could be quite interesting. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I just think it's going to be one by one of these four-year-olds. Okay. Um, I would throw another foot that I did think. I couldn't quite understand the price of Keys Chorister, who was third in the Melrose last year. The proper fast ground horse. Um, and is sort of, what, 25, 30? Yeah, it's just, just form, fast ground form. Done a lot of running. I think we know how good yeah. he is. Well, she is. I just thought she, I thought ran quite well last time out actually. Yeah. G given yeah, um, I won't argue that fifth that. in the Asian Rome race, obviously. Um, what else was in there? Mahaba the Champ, of course, was in there. Uh, Paradis mm. was in there mm. as well. I thought yeah. that was the only yeah. one that maybe was a bit overpriced. What price Keys Corister, by the way, Simon? Keys Corister is. God, you caught me on the hop there. I think it's about thirty-three to one. Anyway, last I looked, so I'll tell you now. Yeah, I've got, actually, yeah, it's thir yeah, thirty-three. So yeah, unless it's uh, unless thirty-three. It's yeah. Yeah, so yeah, possibly overpriced. Yeah, um, and a, a horse you backed in the past as well, uh, Tom Keys Corister, still a, an unexposed four year old. What, what did you like in the uh, E board? Do you agree that it's probably an easier race to win this year? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with everything Keel says. The only thing I think is actually a better race that these four year olds are in it. Mm. I love races where you've got unexposed horses trying to beat, trying to beat the, ex the, the, uh, the exposed handicaps. A race where you've got 22. Horses rated 100 or more, or more, or more. For me, it comes down to who, what happens on the day rather than necessarily ability. Because, but these 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 four-year-olds, I think it, right, it's a much better spectacle for, for for me as a as a guy who likes betting on horses than having you know horses that have been running around you know seven-year-olds that have been running around in group races coming fit against each other all day long. But that's that. So, but yes. In, in essence, yes, it is probably an easier race to win. I, I like another four-year-old, uh, the old goalkeeping team, Yashin. I think he's got a very good chance. Uh, when he won a group race at Leopardstown earlier in the season, he had three Royal Ascot winners and Emily Dickinson well behind him, well behind. And he showed a great turn of foot to catch a, an enterprisingly ridden uh, winner of Joseph O'Brien's and get up on the line. And he's got a very, very good record on fast ground and better ground. I think if you throw out, if you, you just strike out the form of his soft ground runs, he's won, I think, his last three, apart from one disappointing one at Ascot. But I think you can throw that out. But I think if, you know, at, at, at Leopardstown, he had Akita Sushi. He had another one, a Royal Ascot winner, and Stratum and Emily Dickinson, all well behind. And while he went up in the weights, I still think there's more to come from him on fast ground. Jessica Harrington had the winner of the staying handicap on Shogar Cup day. She couldn't have won any easier. I can't remember the name of the, the very man. She's very dangerous when she gets these runners. I'm slightly concerned about the draw in stall 18 if they stay up the, the far side. As I, as, I say, as I was trying to say earlier on, it's quite hard to get in the race. I'm not going to get overly worried about it, but, but in the old days, it was hard to win from out there. These days, it's not so hard when they come up the middle. If they come up the middle, it's not an issue whatsoever. Well, I think I think old Lev Yashin's got a pretty decent chance against the other two. I think I think on what he you know he's won a Group Three at the end of the day. He's getting better. Those two other horses have to prove that they're that good. Uh, they've not beaten any horses as good as the ones he's beaten. Now he has to give them a bit of weight, but not that much. He's giving six pounds to Real Dream. I think it is. But I think he deserves that. So I think Lev Yashin's got a good chance. The other one I thought was quite interesting was Jack Finbar for uh, good name that. I like Jack Finbar for. Uh, mm -hmm. For Willie Mullins, I just thought I just thought when he was a three-year-old for Harry Dunlop, he'd be a very good horse. Ghost Watch at Sandown, giving him weight. Uh, Ghost Watch ended up being rated in the hundred and somethings. 
Jack Finbar's run two races for Willie Mullins. He was uh, third, sort of a staying on eye-catching third behind Espionage. He went a bit bonkers in the Gordon Stakes, but I think that's pretty decent. <coughs> decent form. Then he was drawn, <coughs> excuse me, on the outside in at Galway in 20, in 20, and he did a lot of running around the bend. The thing about Galway is if you start racing right around the bend, you've got no chance. You can win from the outside, but you don't want to make your ground around the bend. That's what he did. William Buick rides him. I expect him to be absurd, actually, the other William Marlin source. And I thought they would be my two, but I totally understand. I'm quite happy to take them to, to see Sweet William or Real Dream win because they've probably got £10 in hand, both of them. But I'm not sure Ab Yashin isn't a, isn't a properly good stayer in the making. And um, I'm always dangerous. You know, from stall two, if Jack Finbar got the run of the race, I could see him going well too. So my main fancy is Lev Yashin, the uh, famous Russian goalkeeper, mm. Paul Cooper. <laughs> Yeah. watching there you go uh, yeah uh, yeah like i said i mean i i wasn't rushing to back him but i will have a saver on him now uh, hey. on, oh, so. oh very good there you go um but uh, will he be first past the post or will he hit the crossbar um and so, 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 sweet william seven to two uh other ones to mention i mean i'm slightly biased towards uh, scampi uh being involved with the syndicate that, uh, that that owns him but he's been exceptional this year as well and he he loves fast ground he's got york form as well and he i know what instead let the form down today but he was three wide and hated every second of it i think but uh, he just he just keeps winning and that's the thing about this race you were saying keels about horses getting into this race um Last year's race, I think there was six horses who came into it off the back of a win, and three of the first four were those. Back in the day, like you said, it, it used to be the group horses who got well handicapped. You can, you can be on an upward curve. And yeah, get I think into yeah, yeah, I think it's more often than not going to be won again by horses on an upward curve, given the, uh, given the, the rating you you now need to get in. Yeah, um, and if Sweet William's seven to two, just a quick one. Why is Adjuvant twelve to one? If he's got York form as well. Oh, he has got York form, but Sweet William did absolutely. Tonk him, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, That's probably why, then. Yeah. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, we haven't mentioned you and Glenn. He was third. <sighs> yeah. He was third. But he should have been in the frame last year. He had a nightmare, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He's got, he's got loads of ability, and I love the old horse. Right? Yeah. Uh, he'll be one of my uh, five or savers right at the, right the off, because I'll have to just in case, even though I know he's not going to win. Yeah, 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 because you'd be <laughs> livid. <laughs> leave it if you want a big prize. Uh, yeah, plenty of opinions then for the uh, the e this uh, this year. Simon Clare uh, offers price boost, extra places, strong opinions. Uh, take it away. Yeah, so we've got a couple of paying the extra place, the five places instead of four. Uh, this, I think this is, this is a good value special. Willie Mullins to train the winner. He's got uh, obviously two leading contenders with Absurd. That's a great name as well. It's Jack Finbar, Tom's favourite name. 15 to 2, Jack Finbar, 8 on Absurd. You get both of them wrapped up together. At eleven to two rather than nine to two, which um, certainly, if you tried to back them both in singles, I think it works out well below, well below that. So uh, that's the Willie Mullins uh, price boost. Just listen, really competitive race. And um, Sweet William, just you know, he, he's he, he's had a tendency to miss the break or be slowly away, drawn low. I know that you know, Tom's made a good point actually. They might come across into the middle of the track rather than up the uh, the far rail, but. Um, I just thought, you know, it, it, with biggest field he's faced, 22 runners, he has run a couple of big-ish fields, 30 runners, 11 runners. So I think it's worth taking on as a, from a bookie point of view, but you can see well, how seductive he will be uh, for, for, the, for favourite backers or people wanting to back, uh, you know, the obvious form horse. The one for me, Paul, sort of saying he's not so keen him, live your dream. He's only been out the first three once in 12 starts and, run, and has been running lots of competitive handicaps. Um, and that was in the Cesaro, which last year. He's only up five pounds. He was quite impressive last time for his win at Newmarket. I know it's top weight, but as, as the guys have said, probably not a vintage e ball. So I thought, uh, live your dream each way with the five places might do for me. But uh, yeah, wonderfully competitive. I think bookies at the round seven two will be taking on Sweet William from that low draw. Okay, Sweet William seven to two shot then. Uh, as for uh, viewers at home, loads and loads and loads of opinions. Um, doo -doo -doo, Tom Leach, Scampi might run well, prefer Safi riding mine. Yes, she was due to ride, but she's been claimed by Random Harvest down at, uh, at Goodwood. Um, as for the uh, the rest, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Tashka needs soft. Uh, a couple of people tipping up that one. Ocean Wind, interested at 50 to 1, yeah. Uh, just, uh, I thought you might win a Supreme Novices Hurdle once upon a time. Uh, Yashin each way for Kanzuk, Andrew Platts and Disney account uh, as, uh, as well. Uh, and uh, a few other opinions. Get shirty for uh, for Frizzy Red. But uh, the uh, the Ebor 2023, Paul Keeley, uh, what's the angle? 
four-year-olds, I'm hoping Real Dream can be the one to serve it up this week, William. OK, uh, there you go. Tom Siegel. Well, I'm hoping you're right about four-year-olds, but I'm on old Lev Yashin. OK, there you go. Um, I, uh, I hope you're wrong about four-year-olds and Scampi wins it, although I have had a save on a four-year-old in Keys Chorister, so they're my two against the field. Simon? Yeah, we had living the dream today. I'm having live your dream tomorrow in the evening. Well, that'll do for me each way. Yeah, that would be a real dream. Oh, no, wait, hang on. That's a <laughs> different horse. Don't, uh, don't mix up your dreams. That's for sure. Well, that would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Uh, three more to go then on the uh, the York Ebor meeting. Uh, rattling on to the, uh, the 410. Six furlong handicap here. You thought there was some old friends on today's card. Well, look at these names. Summergan, 13 to 2. Arazio, 8 to 1. Aberama Gold, 8 to 1. Kings Lynn, 9 to 1. Gale Force Mayor, 10 to 1. Mr. Wagyu, 10 to 1. The Green Man, 10 to 1. Lethal Levi, 11 to 1. Uh, bigger prices, the rest. Uh, fresh, of course, fresh is running here. Mum's tipple. Oh my God, it's like, it's like flicking through a Family album, this Tom Siegel. Uh, 13 to 2 the field, though. Uh, pace spread out all over the shop. Well, not a lot of pace, actually, when I, when I started to look into it. But, again, you're the man. I think it was this race last year. You said, I don't I don't care. I haven't really looked at it. I couldn't give a monkeys, but Summer Gand will win. Summer Gand <laughs> went and won. So, please, uh, take it away. Well, uh, once again, a five-minute approach. Uh, Mum's tipple started 11 to 2 favourite to win the race last year. Got hampered about 25 times. Frankie gave up on him very quickly. He's a pound higher than when fourth in the only a pound higher than when fourth in the Wokingham. Uh, anyone who remembers him as a two year old remember him winning by 11 lengths in an amazing time here over course and distance. I like his draw and stall three. So that was it for me. Mum's tipple didn't know any of the others. OK, Mum's tipple it uh, is, yeah, who hated the ground at Goodwood last time out. Paul Keeley, they're all here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I was looking at it when I saw the race. Oh, that's an old mate of mine. So, so, so's he, so's yeah. she, so's he. <laughs> Look, they're all there. The one that can't win is fresh. I cannot believe he'd be fast enough to win over six furlong on lightning fast ground at York. Right, I was going to go can't, back in. Can't have that. So, that. so that's the one. Uh, I've backed two. One of them is Summergand. I think you've got, I think you've just got to have at least a save on him because he's back in form. Uh, he probably ran into a very well handicapped horse in that three year old Sophia Starlight in the Great St Wilfred. He won his side in the Great St Wilfred last year before coming out here and winning this. Mm -hmm. He's got a five pound rise this time, which he didn't have last year, but even so, he, he won the Air Gold Cup off this mark last year. So he's in form, he's great on fast ground. He loves it when they go fast and he can really finish. And the other one was Mum's Tipple for all the reasons Tom said. I mean, he went off 11 to 1 for the uh, Wokenham, two starts ago, finished fourth, uh, and he, he opened up a 20 to one for this race, and you know, just, that's just completely bonkers, isn't it? I mean, why is he 21 for this race? Frankie's not riding him this time, uh, you know, which is, you know, he, you know, he probably would be 11 to two if Frankie was back on, which is, you know, just shows how ridiculous it is. Uh, so yeah, I think, he's got a, I think he's got a massive chance, and the one I'm gonna regret is a horse with tons and tons of good York form, but I haven't backed it, is Lethal, yeah. Le Lethal Levi. Yeah. Yeah, he, there's not a lot. Well, there's not a lot of pace here. That's what I looked at. I thought there was. I kind of went through it thinking this is going to be a mad gallop, and I could only really see three. And they were Lethal, Le Lethal Levi, Mister Wagyu, uh, and Gail Force Meyer, who was running four yeah, handicaps. I wouldn't be surprised. Two if, years. I, wouldn't, I actually wouldn't be surprised if Mum Stipple is up there early this yeah, time. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lethal Levi is a proper. He's a proper mm. speedball, but he often gets taken on, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Ross, what about the Green Man? Do we fancy the green man at all? I was looking closely at the green man. Didn't he, he last time in the uh, Aberama Gold Race, which obviously was Frank when him and Summerhand have run so well since, mm. he ran blinded, didn't he, to be third. He split those two. He's a lot better off at the weights with the pair of them again now. He had he had a, he had Daniel Muscat on that time. He's got Kayla Fisher back on, who takes the five off. She wasn't riding. Much better off. She's nearly a stone better off with Aberama. She's better off with Summerhand. And he's got an amazing look. Two runs at York. I thought he could go well, but I was just I just thought Mum's tipple was, was the, the better price of the two. Yeah. I was a bit worried at box eighteen drawing away from the pace when there's not that much on uh, he was there was loads of five furlong horses when he won over six early on the season, so I was I was, I was worried there wouldn't be as much pace. But yeah. Um, but just Mr. Wagyu is another one who's got a cracking uh, form here and ran really well at Goodwood. But Gail Force Meyer, guys, I mean, this is a listed and group, face, uh, group race mare. She's run in four handicaps in the past two years. She's won every single one of them. Um, She's, she's Dodds, she's Beasley, she's got box six. She ran a really good race at Ponty the other day, which was clearly teeing her up for this. She was third to swing along in Group 3 company back in July. 
She's off 102. She's five pound lower than she was at the back end of last year when she was running up against Azure Blue. Ten, ten to one. She's a group horse. Anyway. She's one, the, she's one of those that you sort of sit and you don't even notice her in the race. And then when she wins, you sort of thought, oh, God, that's Gail. That's the one that always wins at York. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. She's one of those. Uh, she's a Gulliver. Uh, well, he was that type as well, wasn't he? Uh, Simon, what about this 410 for you? Well, it's time to mention Jim Crowley. Um, <laughs> era. It, listen, Eras was a horse that he really he, he thought would run a massive race and ran a very good race in last year's Commonwealth Cup uh, over six hours. That was the last time Eras ran on good to firm ground. His last few starts has been on soft and heavy. Uh, this is the first time he's ever been dropped into handicap company. Ryan Moore takes the ride because Jim is on his extended holiday. Uh, and I just think back on faster ground, unless the rain does come, um, he's got loads, you know, he's got some nice, he's got loads of nice form. I think he could run a big race. So he, he'll do for me. Uh, Kings Lynn, just an interesting one. Andrew Balding now is, owns him. So he's been, di- the, 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 the King and Camilla and Queen Camilla have divested, appears to have divested of Kings Lynn. But Andrew Balding clearly retains the faith in a horse. He's got lots of group one, you know, decent group one form. Obviously ran a good race, ran a long way in the Wokingham. Didn't like the heavy ground at all in the Stewards Cup last time, the Coral Stewards Cup, I should mention. Uh, and I thought, again, <laughs> He, he looks a horse who could run well at a big price. We, we're paying the five places, and the in the no special is David Omara to win this race. He's got obviously uh, Summergand and Aberama Gold, 30 to two and eight to one. Those two, we're going 100 to 30. You're going to have them wrapped up together if you just fancy uh, Omara to win uh, with one of his two. That's from 11 to four. Right. Two more races to, uh, to go, uh, while Kiel's prints off uh, another bingo card. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we've got two more to, uh, to go. Moving on to the, the 4.45 at York. It's a list of race over five furlongs. Uh, for the, uh, the juveniles here, uh, Perisangui is 15 to eight at favourites. Three to one by here, Alabama 15 to two, inquisitively eight to one. And we've got about as much time to talk about this as it will take to run it. Kiel's? Yeah, quite heavily involved here because um, Bat here opened up at sevens in the place originally and I thought you'd be lucky to get threes, which is what he is at the moment. And... It's just, it was just a case of he hated the ground last time. This is the horse that Richard Hannon said had done some of the best homework they've ever seen there. Uh, and he absolutely travelled brilliantly at Goodwood and then just couldn't pick up out of the ground. They knew they were taking a chance on the ground because he drifted from a, very, from a fairly short price early in the week out all the way out to 9-1, to one, bigger, bigger on the exchanges. But he actually travelled so well that he traded at 13-8. Pure Sang, on the other hand, has improved dramatically for the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his buyer claim he had a loads of soft ground formed in the uh, one plant. He did win on fast ground too, it has to be said, but I just think he massively improved for it. And I think Bay here is gonna we're gonna see the real Bay here tomorrow. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't turn the form around. Okay. Uh, Bay here then, a three to one shot. Uh, I liked a couple in this, uh, Tom, uh, but mainly Mon Nashleve, who I couldn't believe York form, ran a blinder at Ascot last time out, Kevin Ryers on fire, ten to one, box one, bang. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want me to move on? Yeah. Tom, yeah, okay, Tom cool. could care less. Uh, Simon McClare, any extra places? Uh, anything uh, tickling your fancy? Uh, no, I've certainly said, I mean, I'm in Ryan Moore watch tomorrow. I think Alabama, obviously, the one with Battle Cry today, the two on race uh, today, and Alabama, and um, loads of experience, ran a decent race in the uh, Windsor Castle. Um, I think uh, he, he looks in each way better at 15 to 2. OK, there we go. Last race of the Ball Festival then. Ten and a half furlong, 17 runners here uh, for this, uh, this finale handicap. It's the John Smith's Cup uh, all over again, pretty much. Haunted Dream, 4-1. to one. Garcia, 6-1. to one. Astro King, 6-1. to one. Have Secret, 7s. Oviedo, 7s. Obelix, 8. Symbol of Light, 9s. If not now, doesn't go. And it's bigger prices the rest. Over to you, Tom Siegel. We haven't got long to talk about it, but again, uh, surely, uh, if that Royal Rhyme handicap is the best, uh, are of the past few weeks have secrets gotta have a chance but i was wrong about what and so yeah have secrets definitely got a chance uh ground very different uh, but he's got four on good ground uh for sure uh just just he was absolutely pulverized that day i mean i when i when i say that was the form i just i'm just a royal ram group royal rhyme groupie now i think you're running the champion stakes and he's probably got a each way chance at a huge price of running well in there if the ground stop Astro King, you've got to throw in despite his top weight after his, I don't know how he lost the uh, John Smith's Cup, actually. He did a, he did a remarkably well, considering he was, came from well off the pace. Oh, and I like, though, prov- uh, hopefully there's not too much rain. As my old friend, Oviedo for uh, Ed Bethel. Heels nearly got a Bethel horse home, Point Linus, earlier in the week. Uh, he's a very, very shrewd trainer, this guy. I'm 
big fan of his. Oviedo ran in a group race last time. Uh, hated the soft ground behind Al Hassi, uh, whatever his name is, at Newbury. Before that, he was drawn 16 of 16 in the in the handicapper. Ascot went too fast, far too much. And before that, he'd become the highest rated three-year-old ever to win the Zetland Gold Cup. So he's a very good horse, Oviedo. Uh, I think, provided he's not drawn out of it, and I don't think he will be, I think he's got a good chance. So he'd be my, uh, he'd be my fancy in the last. Okay, Oviedo for Tom then. And if that one wins, obviously, uh, having uh, back to Bethel Horse earlier, it'll be spainful for Keels. Uh, but uh, what did you... <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yes. Uh, long week, hasn't it, Keels? Uh, what's, uh, what's, the, um, what's the smasher in the last? You're uh, always good in the last race. Uh, yeah, it wasn't today. Uh, but, um, <laughs> I mean, the last race of the festival. You, it all comes together for you. Yeah, I think... I actually think Garcia's been crying out to be dropped back in trip. Uh, one, he's just too keen at a mile and a half, doesn't get the pace he wants, and he quite often doesn't quite get home. Uh, he did beat Forza Water here over a mile and a half last spring, uh, giving him £11. Uh, I think if he gets a good pace to run at, I think he's going to go very close. OK. Uh, I'm going to have a, a tiny a tiny squeak, a little dabble on E.T. at a, uh, a very I've big backed price. him a few times. I, I, I thought he was going to be an awful lot better than he has so far turned out to be since his last win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's fast, fast ground round here as well should, uh, should be interesting. But it is a bit of a... Um, a moonshot, perhaps, with him. Uh, but anyway, uh, the last race of the Evo meeting, uh, Simon Clare, what do you got? Yeah, box to box uh, for Coral um, Ambassador Hugo Palmer. He's also ran well uh, without uh, troubling the judge today. Well enough. And, and, and box to box, uh, second to Spirit Dancer last time out. He's been running really well. And Hugo says he's in very good form. Got to step up. It'll probably to run a personal best uh, to win this. But uh, he looks each way value at 12 to 1. And Massa Kayla, fascinating horse. Keep looking at him. Owned, obviously, by the Mariscotti. Shred by Andrew Balding. Still got that fourth of the time. Stop laughing. <laughs> now he's, in he's now had wins. You don't he never get the same play. number twice in bingo, you know. Kills, I thought you, I thought you had a train to catch. <laughs> I have, sorry, I've got a train to catch. Hurry up. <laughs> These days, Massa Kayla might just suddenly uh, show that form again. Not holding out too much hope. So box to box for me. Uh, five places we're playing on the last one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, we're going to wrap up the show with the uh, the naps uh, after this. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis, and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9 p.m. in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. <laughs> there you go. The longest promo in kills his life. Uh, but do you remember this from earlier in the week? that if we get over a 1,000 this week, Tom Siegel has said he's going to come in to the studio for Champions Day. That's right, Tom, isn't it? Uh, we had 366 likes last night, and we didn't even have that little bit of bait on the hook. Oh, flipping it. That's far too many. Now, if you, if you out there can just stop doing the likes, <laughs> we'll be absolutely <laughs> delighted. Stop doing the likes. Stop doing the likes. <laughs> Absolutely smashed the record on day one for likes for in the nose. Smashed it again on day two, and we smashed it last night. <laughs> we had over six hundred on last night's show alone. Tom, you're coming in, buddy. You're coming in. I'm in. I'm in. Before we go, Keels, just to let you know, I'm just going to run through all twenty-seven runners in the Irish Cambridge. How do you feel oh, about that? Brilliant. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Come on, look, 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 laptops off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get thrown at the screen. Come on! Bit. But Tom, you're going to be in, buddy. Champions Day. We'll have a do a we'll do a two hour we'll do a two hour show. You can stay for the Breeders' Cup preview as well. We'll get the champagne, the top hat. I'm looking forward to it, Ross and all. I'll be there with you. Can't wait. Lovely stuff. Right. Nap of the day, Tom Siegel. Uh, I can't. Remember. Lev Yashin, of course. Got to be the goalkeeper. Where's Paul Cooper when you need him? <laughs> it's got to be the goalkeeper, Paul mm. Keeley. Bye here, wins the roses. Back here, then it is. Simon Clare. Uh, live the dream in the evil. 
with the Dream in the Ebor and Spirit Dancer to win the opener, Fast Ground York form. There we go. Thanks for watching. Like the stream. See you next time.